Uh, Tatiana Maslany, you play Aaron Hurley in the new film Stronger. It's uh, based on the true story about Jeff Bowman. Uh, tell us a little bit about your first reactions to reading the script. Um, well, I mean, I, I, I was very familiar with the picture of um, Jeff that everyone had kind of seen after, after the bombing. Um, but what was so interesting about the script to me and what, what kind of drew me in was all of the people in his life around him who were part of his support and part of um, the complicated process of healing in the public eye. Uh, and, and it was just this very intimate story kind of taken from uh, a headline and from an image and from, um, you know, the idea of what this guy went through and who he was. Um, and, and it really broke it down into a very personal thing. And, and I just related so much to Aaron and Jeff, to their, uh, you know, kind of on and off again relationship, the push and pull between them and that kind of deep love, but also, you know, absolute fear of of what the other meant, you know, in terms of, of challenging them as people. Tell us a little bit about who Aaron is. So Aaron Hurley um, it was at the time Jeff's on again, off again girlfriend who uh, was running the marathon and was the reason that he was there at the finish line. Um, and, and so Aaron is this um, woman in his life who has always, you know, they've always sort of been in this tenuous place. Um, and yet they have deep love for each other. And, and she really is this kind of emotional stamina. <clears throat> you know, she's, she's this strength throughout the, the film and throughout his recovery that, that never wavers even though she's in doubt and, and even though she's in pain as well and, and, and fearful. Um, so she's an incredibly strong character. And in the film, I mean, it, it makes clear the point that, um, you know, Jeff has a problem showing up to things. Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, there's a reason why there's this tenuousness in their relationship. What do you think it is that uh, keeps drawing her back to him? It's a great question. I mean, I feel like there's just a deep love there. There's a deep knowing of each other. And, and, and I think in a way, the characters in the film, you know, Aaron is fulfilled by her role, at, you know, in, in the sense of she, her strengths are in her empathy and her, in her care and in her ability to lift him up. You know, that's where she really thrives. And I think that sometimes in relationships, that's what you seek out is like familiar patterns. You know what I mean? And I, and I think the two of them in the film are really caught in a pattern of behavior that has to change. You know, she, she's sort of challenging Jeff to stand up and be equal with her. Whereas he's sort of still stuck as a, as a young boy you know, in a lot of ways. Um, so in, I think, you know, she fulfills for him this thing of he can be a kid forever. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's, it's sort of this, um, not necessarily the healthiest relationship, but it's, but it's definitely one that's relatable, I think. Well, certainly a lot changes uh, following the uh, attack uh, mm -hmm. that uh, took away Jeff's legs. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, so much, I mean, obviously there's a physical and a psychological change for him, but what are some of the ways that Aaron changes as a result of that. Well, she's she's really forced to make a decision as to whether she's going to be there or not. You know, um, <clears throat> in the same way whether she's going to show up. Um, and I think the the conflict for her is that it's not easy to step away anymore. It was never easy for for her to step away from the relationship in that they were just tied into each other. But but now there's this guilt in her, and she's having to reckon with that with the fact that he was there for her, with the fact that his life has changed inexorably because of this, but her life has also changed. You know, she, she's unable to, she can't remove herself from the situation. She's tied into it. Um, and I think for her, the growth is, is really in discovering what she needs and demanding what she wants from him and kind of laying down the, the, the rules, you know, um, really growing up in this relationship and, and demanding that he, he do the same. Um, she gives up her whole family, her work, her everything for him uh, and gets pregnant as well. So there's massive shifts, you know, that she's having to make massive sacrifices. And, and I think in that, uh, it's hard to describe, define what it is exactly, but you, you can't help but grow from that. And I mean, like you said, I mean, she really pushes him to grow up. I mean, one of the really 
interesting qualities about this movie is that uh, he doesn't change immediately after he loses his legs. I mean, he doesn't undergo this overnight metamorphosis into an adult man. Yeah. You know, I mean, he still is beset by a lot of the same problems that yeah. he had prior to it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Jake, Jake always talks about it in terms of a movie about a guy who takes a few steps. <laughs> and that's really what it is, you know, it's the incremental growth of somebody who's forced to, to face themselves in, in really impossible situations and unfair situations. But, but honestly, throughout it, he becomes more of a, of a full rounded person. You know, he's, he is able to stand up in a, in a different way. Uh, and I think that's what's so kind of interesting about the film and, and sort of subversive, you know, as opposed to him being this fully formed hero, which is what everybody kind of put him as when it happened, because everyone needs that. They need that hope. They need to know that that person's okay and they're stronger for what happened. But the truth of it is they're in the most fragile state they've ever been in and then thrust into the public eye and having to heal publicly and also repress everything that's really happening. You know, it's, it's a really, it's a messed up thing and, and uh, super complicated. And Aaron is also uh, constantly at odds with Jeff's mother, who's played by Miranda yeah. Richardson. Can you talk a little bit about um, having to, to stand up to her in, in that dynamic? Well, I mean, Miranda, first off, is like, like a legend. She's unbelievable. You know, as an actor, I was just in very, like, in absolute reverence of her and getting to play with her. Um, and, then, and then the dynamic between her and Aaron, between Patty and Aaron, is so tenu tenuous as well. But, but also, like, they're kind of the same person in a lot of ways. They both want very similar things, which is kind of ownership over Jeff, ownership over what he does and how to protect him. And, and they know best, you know, they're, they're really competing for who's his mother in a lot of ways and who's his lover, which is, you know, <laughs> all kinds of, you know what I mean? Like sub subtextually, but, um, but yeah, they, they sort of, they both love deeply. It's all about love for both of them, but they just do it in such different ways. You know, there's a lot of class difference between the two of them, which comes into play and which makes it, um, difficult for Patty to relate to Aaron to 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 accept her in, and Aaron is is a threat to her. You know, so in the same way that Patty is a threat to Aaron, it's it's a really nice nice dynamic to get to play with. Was there a particular scene in the movie that was difficult for you from an acting standpoint? I mean, there's a lot of really strong emotional material in the movie. Was there something that uh, you were hesitant about or you didn't know quite how to play at the moment? I mean, was there, what was the dif most difficult moment for you? I have to say that the whole process was that, really, for me. I think, I feel like because of what Aaron's going through, where she doesn't know what she's doing at any one moment, and she's in a state of, like, survival. As an actor, I had to kind of go to that place, you know, and I just sort of ended up in that place where, every scene, and, and this is also a testament to the way Jake works and the way David works, um, especially, is that any ideas I had about the scene before I got to set were destroyed <laughs> in three seconds. And I mean that in the most complimentary way, you know, getting to set and having to, to um, duke it out in the moment and discover it together and really be there present with no ideas, no preconceptions. Um, so each scene had that, each scene had that feeling. And, and, you know, there were, there were certainly scenes that emotionally, like, I guess, tick a box in terms of com complication, but, but those are also the, the biggest joy, like that scene in the car between Jeff and Aaron, you know, I get to work opposite Jake, who is so alive and so violently emotional. And, and as an actor, not only is that difficult to go to, it's also a complete joy for me, you know, it's it's a wonderful thing to get to step into an experience and, and empathize and, and express it, but you know, also know that we're in a safe space and all of that, you know. Uh, now, had you met the real Aaron before you took on this role? Did you glean anything from her that you used for the part? Yeah, I mean, as soon as I got the part, I started running, knowing that that was like a big part of her physical life and and her emotional life, her mental life, all of it. You know, it kind of ties ties in. From, from what I've read about marathon runners and from what I've experienced in my own running, it is, it is really a mental thing. But um, 
getting to hang out with her then socially going you know meeting her kid and meeting her family and talking to her about life and about this experience um yeah i, I did definitely glean an essence from her but i never sought to do kind of like a you know an impression or anything you know there were there were very few physical things that i took and it was more so this incredible strength and emotional stamina that she has throughout all this where she sort of has a really grounded perspective on everything and and really no nonsense no bullshit um which i really appreciate and kind of lock, locked on to um and also just you know relating to her as a young woman going through something that changes your life you know i think we've all been through things like that and and talking to her about it was was really uh, clarifying in that way. I wonder if you could talk a bit more about working with David Gordon Green. I mean, you mentioned before, uh, you know, coming in with preconceived notions and having them shattered. I wonder uh, how he did that and then what he gave you that helped you with your performance. Well, David is just like, sorry, our dryer is going insane. It's, can you hear it even? Is that the word? Um, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> Everything's falling apart in our house. Uh, it happens. <laughs> it happens, yeah. Um, I'm just gonna, can you guys shut the beeping off? Tommy? Oh, whatever. Um, <laughs> David, so David is amazing. David's incredible. He was somebody who, obviously I'd like experienced his work through his many different, you know, film choices that are always kind of like polar opposite to the last thing you know what I mean? He, he's always mixing it up, and that was what was so exciting to me about him doing this project. I felt like it was such a, um, a departure for him and, and, and all of that. And he really, he chose to do this film differently. Like he, he crewed his, his he, he made his crew a completely different crew than he's ever worked with to put himself out of his comfort zone. And that really is David. Like he's constantly seeking to put his actors in a safe space, but out of their comfort zone. And, and he did that through improv, he did that through throwing lines at us midway through a scene, through flipping a scene on its head, throwing the dialogue out, trying it a different way. You know, he just really, um, he just works in such an organic way um, and such a playful way. And so he was just, he was a dream to work with. And he's really light touch, like he doesn't over, you know, micromanage anything, he, he really, is fascinated by people and characters and, and wants your weirdness to come out. Uh, so he's, he's really about that, and he, you know, kind of casts accordingly. And how much did the environment, I don't know how much of this you shot in Boston. Uh, yeah, all any, of it. All of it, okay. Yeah. Well, how much did that uh, add to um, your performance and, and Jake's performance? I mean, just being in that, the actual environment that this took place in. Yeah, I mean, it, it it's, had to be in Boston. Like there was no other place we could have filmed it. In terms of just being in the environment where, you know, walking down the streets where things happened, everybody on the crew had a story about where they were on the day, what happened, you know, <clears throat> if they knew somebody. We filmed at like Spalding Rehab where Jeff went through his physio and met a lot of survivors. You know, we were in, invested in the, in the community and, and had a lot of people in Jeff's life in the film, you know, like his nurses and stuff like that were who intubated, intubated him, you know, the scene where he's having his, the, what is it called? The, the breathing pipe taken out. Right. Yeah. The tube. Yeah, yeah. The tube. So that was all the nurses who were actually there on the day. So, you know, there's a sense of authenticity and I think that's also a testament to David, but he really thrives in that and, and knows the importance of it. And, Boston was just an incredible place to be. I just had never been there before, and it, it, it I felt completely head over heels for the city um, and for the spirit of the city and how it has survived this, this you know, horrific tragedy and, and really become stronger for it. Why do you think it's important to tell this story? I think it's important because I feel like right now there is so much um, dis divisiveness and so much hate and so much um, hopelessness. I think we all feel quite hopeless, you know, and a little bit um, maybe stunted by that hopelessness, you know, it's hard to know what to, to do to tackle all of the changes in the anger and all of this that's happening in the world, the violence and the, the hatred. 
but what this movie does is really like talk about how how strong the human spirit is and how much we can survive and thrive from things that happen to us how we aren't we don't have to be defined by them we can rise above them and and yet you know they become part of us you know um but i think it is about love and it's about how love heals and how you know it's only in reaching across a divide an emotional divide a political divide any of those things that we are able to to be stronger and to 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 be okay you know we're not going to do it by not helping each other and not lifting each other up and also not asking for help you know those things are really important and i think that's that's really what it is about you know yeah I wanted to talk to you a bit about Orphan Black as well, uh, which uh, just finished airing its fifth season. Mm -hmm. uh, so you had just won the Emmy uh, mm -hmm. prior to this season uh, coming on. Were you uh, shooting uh, before you won the Emmy or was it afterwards? We we were shooting, yeah, like I, I won it between season four and five. So then right. we went back and, and filmed again, yeah. Did that put any extra pressure on you uh, to <laughs> to do even better work? Or I mean, what was what was the attitude? So it was work? like, all right, what do you got? Um, no, there's <laughs> there's pressure to bring the Emmy to set. There was that. <laughs> um, but uh, I I don't know. I mean, any of the visibility it, it invariably means that there's a bit more light on your face in terms of like you know people watching and people commenting or, or cr criticizing or whatever. But it, it's also honestly tremendously bolstering to have that kind of response. And we felt that love from day one in terms of like the clone club response and being at Comic-Con and, and all of these things that go like, oh wow, what, we, what we're doing is touching people and changing people and, and they enjoy it, you know? So there's something quite freeing about that. Um, but yeah, for sure. There's you know a weird pressure on it, but 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 I I you know tend to 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 put those awards or other things kind of on, uh, to the side when I work because if not I I'd, I'd just be focusing on something that doesn't involve you know my creative process and being messy and and experimenting and taking risks you know. Yeah. And in the show, I mean, you uh, play multiple characters as well. Um, Generally speaking, when I, I ask people, uh, you know, how has your character changed over this yeah. season? So how have your characters <laughs> changed over season five? I mean, what were some of the new developments that you were able to work with? Yeah, I mean, it feels like it was like 10 years ago now, somehow. Yeah. <laughs> it feels like a long time ago. Um, I feel like what, what I was really interested in in the last season was was the ways in which we fight for our freedom and then what it means to have that freedom and w what we can actually do with it. And, and, you know, Sarah, the, the, the main, main, main clone, mm -hmm. um, she in the last episode goes through this thing where she kind of destroys, takes the head off the patriarchy in a way, does this thing that, you know, will in an essence set, set her free. But then, she's left with this silence after that and this sense of now she's left just fighting herself. <laughs> she doesn't have this thing to focus on anymore. Now she has to look at who she is and what she's done and how she has disappointed herself or how she has changed or grown or what she needs to still tackle in her inside of her in her life. And it isolates her. It makes her far again, like, like in stronger, because she's in pain, she's not reaching out. But it's in this community of sisters that she has. And again, like the sense of like reaching out and holding each other up was a big, was a big thing. And I, I just liked that kind of incremental change that happened in her. Just the realization that because of all this, this fight that she's had for these women in her life, they will always be there to hold her up. And, and I don't think that's always a message we get from film and TV about women and about communities of women. It's often competition. Uh, there's only space for one. You know, there's jealousy. There's all these things. And those are all real, very true things. But but I, I sort of loved that it imagined a world where that community is actually bolstering, you know. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And I mean, it's so interesting, uh, you know, this science fiction show that's able to have these greater themes. I mean, that's mm. sort of a, you know, a great thing about a genre like science fiction is that it's able to explore these themes under the guise of entertainment. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah and I, I think that's always been something that I've, you know, loved about it is that it sort of veils it in, uh, you know, the conceit of Orphan Black having these clones could just be a cool concept, but what it actually is talking about is uh, individual versus, you know, nature nurture and um, who you are as a person, the choices you make, how things define you, how we are all part of one thing that just fractures off and we become all these different things. And, um, and it, it, you know, it's really about, becomes about bodies and women's bodies and ownership and autonomy and all of this stuff reproductive rights, you know, we're able to talk about this stuff through the guise of like, this guy's got a tail, you know what I mean? <laughs> like you still, you're still entertained and still having fun, but it's, but it, I'm glad we got to talk about stuff that I cared about. I, I wanted to ask you about your Emmy win because it was a huge surprise. Um, mm -hmm. What was it like for, I mean, from your perspective, sitting there and then hearing your name called, um, I mean, what was going through your mind? Were you surprised at all or? Um, well, first off, you for something when totally mispronounced my name, so yes, I, was like, I, was gonna... <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, 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 right. That was part of the surprise for us. We were like, who did he just say? <laughs> that person, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, oh, it was a, it was a shock and, and it was, it's, it, it, I have felt very Canadian in that moment. <laughs> I was just like, I think I like ran to the stage. I was in heels, but I was just like, oh, I've got to get this, like, I've got to say something quick and then leave so that nobody's like, get off the stage. Um, I, I just, yeah, it's just wild. It was wild to be part of a night like that and to be, to be given that kind of uh, accolade. Like it's, it's still something that I can't quite con uh, conceive and, and, um, you know, in the beginning of Orphan Black, we had no idea anybody was going to even watch the show, let alone have this kind of response to it. So it's it's wild. Yeah. Well, thank you so much and uh, congratulations on Stronger and Orphan Black. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thanks for chatting. You're welcome. Have a good one.